Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about doing a Varroa mite powdered sugar treatment on this hive, one of the hives out at the farm. Um, this was during a class, so we didn't do a lot of talking um, on the video itself out at the class because everybody was ans asking questions and a lot of stuff going on. So I'm going to do a little bit of a voiceover to be able to talk to this, talk to you about this a little bit. Um, as usual, remember that uh, things that we cover on our channel for our education purposes. Um, it's not the only way to do it. There are lots of different methods for most everything we talk about. We just kind of go over the things that work well for us. So just keep that in mind when you're listening to us or when you're listening to other videos. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do these kinds of things, but this just happens to work good for us. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about right now what's going on. Um, we're powdered sugaring one of our beehives. Um, this is a preventative that works very good for us. Um, we've only had one Varroa mite that we've ever seen on one bee in one hive in the last 12 years in our hives. Uh, I'm not going to say it's just because of this, but we do preventative measures whether we see Varroa mite in our hive or not, and we feel fortunate that we haven't had to deal with too many of those. Uh, they may be in there and we may not have seen them, but as far as actual, actually seeing them, we've only ever just seen one. Uh, and we removed it. So what's going on right now? Um, a little bit of background for this powdered sugar treatment. Powdered sugar treatments are done to stimulate the bees to groom each other. That doesn't normally occur in a hive. So by dusting them lightly with powdered sugar, it makes it so that they groom each other. Um, the bee will groom off the powdered sugar off of herself or himself if it's a drone and they can't reach the back of their thorax between their two wings. So that's usually where the varroa mite attaches itself, not always, but most of the time. So what that happens is, is that the bee can't get the varroa mite off its back. Well, we dust them with powdered sugar and that powdered sugar is also left on her back. She can't reach that either. So once she gets her body cleaned off, then the next girl over, the bee over says, hey, you missed a spot. And she comes over and in the process of cleaning off that powdered sugar on the back of the other bee, that varroa mite can be popped off and fall off the bee. And hopefully if you have a screen bottom on for your summertime, it'll fall out of the hive and on the ground. So just kind of a way to help them keep their mite treatments or to keep their mite counts down in their hives in order to try to avoid using a chemical in a hive. We've never used a chemical in our hives for any reason and we're not about to, to, to start. So we use for tracheal mites, for varroa mites, for hive beetles, for everything under the sun. We have some sort of a remedy. Many times we have more than one remedy that we use and uh, we try to prevent having to use a chemical. So we're powdered sugaring. Pretty obvious what's going on right now. We're pulling out the frames in each hive. We are, it's usually obviously a two man job. Um, we pull out the frame, we locate the bees, and then we give them a dusting of sugar, powdered sugar, plain old powdered sugar, nothing fancy. Um, this happens to be in one of those old antique uh, mixers. It doesn't work great. As you can tell, they're banging on it in order to get the sugar out. Usually you can crank a handle or, or pinch a handle and it'll come out. But this one has been used enough that uh, <laughs> we have to use the bang method to be able to get it out. So you're pulling frames out. The objective is, is to cover the bees with a light dusting of powdered sugar. If you pull a frame out and there are no bees on it, then don't dust it. You're not trying to coat the equipment or the hive. You're just trying to get it on the bees. So there are some methods that I have seen in other videos that I am not too excited about. The one is, is still a powdered sugar treatment, but what they basically do is pile it or pour it on top so the frames, and then just using their brush, they let it fall down in between the frames. That to me is not as effective. Um, we have tried that, and then after we've done that, we've actually pulled those frames back out and less than half of those bees were actually thoroughly coated in the stuff, in the powdered sugar. So it wasn't extremely effective. There are other videos I've seen where they absolutely drench them in powdered sugar, and uh, that's somewhat unnecessary. So you can see here, we're just giving them a light dust, just enough to coat them to stimulate that process of grooming each other. 
So some of the other things going on, obviously this frame here is kind of cool. That's a lot of brood on the right hand side. That's all capped brood. As we go through this hive, um, we see a lot of different kinds of cat brood. You'll have to excuse me backing up a little bit here and there. Um, take a quick switch over. This was happening on a hive right next to the one we're doing the powdered sugar. Um, this one we had just gone through and worked on a little bit. That's kind of fun. They were all parked out on the front deck and they were fanning in order to uh, spread the pheromone of their hive and of their queen so that any bees that got displaced while we had the hive torn apart can find their way back to the entrance. So we're back to this hive. It looks like we're on the second brood box now. Um, there's more f uh, honey in these frames as we go across when we powdered sugar. So that frame's really nice. It's got a lot of, about half full of honey and some brood in the center. I'm gonna pull out this next frame. So it's basically just a process, frame by frame box by box. So there's a nice brood pattern in the center surrounded by honey up and over the top. We call that a honey bridge. Um, same thing on this side, not as much brood in the center. That's probably hatching out. So we do these powdered sugar treatments, whether we see varroa or not. We do this once in the spring, we do this once in the summer, and we do it twice in the fall. We do it twice in the fall because uh, the varroa mite count is usually the highest in the fall and we want to make sure we knock that down before the bees uh, huddle up and go into winter. So we're still powdered sugaring. It was a little breezy uh, while we're doing this, but the bees were reacting very well to it. There's no aggressiveness going on. You can see one of the students in the background with their cell phone taking a picture of the <laughs> some of the bees on the ground. Uh, we love teaching these classes, um, we love having people come out, we love having them help us do hands-on things and learn. Most of everybody that comes to these classes, not everyone, but most everyone has bees of their own, so this is just extra experience for them. Works out really good. So we're down to the last couple of frames here, still pulling them out. Every one of these frames has got a good brood patch in the center and a honey bridge up and around the top. They all look really good. This is a great opportunity to, to do a hive check, to be able to look at the health of the bees while you're doing this. Although we tend to clip right along when we do this because we don't want to take too much time uh, breaking the hive down and, and jostling around every single frame. So you don't want to be too careless. You don't want to do it fast too fast. You don't want to bang them around. You don't want to drop the queen out of the hive or squish her during this process. So you have to be, um, you know, you have to take your time doing it, but you also want to not take too much time because this hive is cracked open and vulnerable. We're down to the last couple frames here, so we're just pulling them out. There's more brood. Um, of course, the inside part has already started hatching. Honey all the way around the outside. This hive is a great hive. This is probably a four-year-old hive. Um, this is under a giant tree, pine tree, sitting next to two hives on a, on a hive stand not in our bee barn it's right up front right up by the house one of our classroom hives survives every year we make multiple splits off of it and there's some capped honey now this one didn't have a lot of bees on it you could dust it and if you didn't want to not that big a deal you're not missing a ton of them and yeah, there are more on this side so it's good that they're getting that side but honey and brood on every frame in this second box and the fir first box had a lot of brood in, in it too so nice big hive so we went down through, we're gonna shove them all back over. We're gonna put this last frame that's hanging on the outside here on this bracket back in, same order. So we're putting it on the same side as we pulled it out. We just took it out in the first place to make room to slide the rest of the frames over. Gonna powder sugar them a little bit more. This is a frame that they're working on, probably the last frame out of the 10 they're working on. So this one, I don't know if it's in the video or not coming up, but we did add a third deep to this hive after we were done. Putting our beetle trap back in, for a couple of bucks, you fill these plastic disposable beetle traps in, beetle blasters in with uh, oil, any kind of oil. Beetles run around as the bees chase them and they go down in these things to get away from them and they get stuck in the oil and they drown and uh, they work real good. For a couple of bucks, it's a great preventative to have in a hive. Whether you have beetles or not, it's one of those things that we do as a preventative. We'd rather not deal with the problem after it takes hold, we'd rather prevent. So that's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed something. We hope you learned something. Please leave us some questions down below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. By doing this, you help others, uh, help us let others know that our videos are worth watching. Um, 
the likes are helpful lets us know we're doing what you want us to do um, so comments below ask us any questions feel free su to suggest other topics you want us to cover in future episodes thanks for watching bye bye